Hello, hello. All right, I'd like to welcome everybody down to the world famous Ernie Ball booth on Saturday here at Anaheim, California. Thank you. I am Lou Saracino. I'm the guy that used to have all that hair, but you know, times are moving, so we're going to get with it. All right, we're here to demonstrate some of the latest, the finest offerings from the fine family here at Ernie Ball. Yes, that's you, Sterling. Uh, We're going to demonstrate two pedals uh, that just came off there, the latest, greatest. We've got the Ernie Ball Ambient Delay, which is down here. Actually, you guys can see that, right? So. What? All right, and then we're also going to use this one over here, which is your overdrive. It's kind of an expressive overdrive. Let's check it out. Expressive right there. All right, so I'm going to jam for you a little bit and I'll take you through it, and then any questions uh, that you have, I probably will not answer. Uh, all right, let's go. Steve Morris amp, because why would you not run through that thing if you get the chance, right? You're welcome. All right, so that being said, here's my kind of straight sound, so you can kind of see what I'm working off of. Uh, as a matter of fact, here, let's change this. Now. All right. Okay, let's say that's now what we're going to do is this is completely straight, straight through the amp. Check it out. allows you to do it's two things it gives you one some distortion which is great which you can dial in anywhere from zero to awesome uh, or you can just go with a straight boost right now I've got the distortion dialed up we're not using any boost so this is straight and as you see it gets to the point where I'm basically 
Now I can also go down and, which is kind of nice for all the vitro, vintage retro stuff, I want to dial a little bit of a punch to it. Here we go. So once again, this is my clean sound. Yeah, you just dial a little bit of expressive uh, distortion. I said they're really good where I've been using them for especially in the studio when you have kind of the old vintage uh, you know the old vintage deluxe or whatever little plexi you want a little bit of extra juice on it these things work great and what's nice is you can kind of just control it on the fly so you know if you're feeling gentlemanly for the rhythm but you want to you know get down to business for the lead just step on the gas and we'll get to there now the other option we're playing with here is this ambient delay let's check this out this is straight as I dial it in about it is uh, it pretty much can never really get crazy out of out of whack. It always stays, I think it was anywhere from what, 50 milliseconds to 750? Well, so somebody told me. So what's great is right now I've got it set for kind of a little bit of a just a nice little, little slap. But what's great is with a simple tweak of the knob you can uh, get your delay, you can get your Brian May on, which is always good. Good too. So if you're using a little bit of gain, so something to consider when we bring on track number two, which is uh, some some more rock and roll. So. If you guys have any questions, keep in mind, this is all the latest, greatest stuff here. You can ask any of the gentlemen here in the white t-shirt. No, sorry, yellow. Sorry, yellow t-shirt. It's the new white. Sorry. Or just the new yellow. Uh, something like that. But anyways, feel free to ask. It's the expressive overdrive or the ambient delay. So give us one second and we'll get back to business for you.
And uh, once again, please feel free to ask any questions. It's Expression Overdrive or the Ambient Delay. Thank you so much. It's Captain here at NAM 2016. I'm on the Music Man and Ernie Ball stand. And I'm guessing you have just watched or are about to watch Blue Saraceno demoing a couple of the new pedals they've launched. So uh, this summer we should see uh, the first arrival of uh, two expression pedals, one with a, a drive circuit built into it and one with a delay circuit built into it. So the idea being you set your delay sound over here and then the actual expression pedal on the top will adjust the volume of the repeats uh, and the actual amount of delay in you know, the delay time and the feedback is done on the knobs like a normal pedal. Uh, tap time pedal as well, uh, if you plug an optional foot switch in. This one is a traditional drive pedal, so you set your drive sound up on the front here and then this will actually do the amount of drive. Uh, so it's kind of just like, <clears throat> from what I understand from Only Ball, they didn't want to just do another drive pedal and another uh, delay pedal to, to add to the millions that are already out there. So interesting little take on those. And there's some new guitars as well, so we're going to look at them now. Rob. Have you ever heard a bloke called Leo Fender? Yeah, I heard of Leo Fender. Everybody keeps talking about this show. What, he was, what did uh, he ever do? Well, Leo did some kind of innovative things with engineering and came up with some kind of cool stuff about guitars. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, allegedly, some guy called Leo Fender, back in the day, did a Stingray. Everybody talks about the, the Music Man Stingray as a bass, but apparently there was originally a guitar as well, and it had quite a few more knobs and buttons on it and was a little bit more, what would you call it, kind of like uh, innovative. Innovative is the word you're looking for. But for 2016, Music Man have taken the basic original Stingray shape and simplified it. Just a tone and volume control, American um, passive pickups, humbucking pickups. Three got a tiny, tiny back scratch plate here, look, look at that. Just in case you scratch it in that one area. Real um, typical music man neck here, so you've got you know very, very narrow kind of neck. Um, some kind of retro colours. It's stunning though, look. This is a sort of radical new design. I don't know where Leo got the idea for, for, for this kind of design from. It's really out there, man. But obviously, no. So this is called the Cutlass, another guitar that Arr! Leo first designed when he went to uh, Music Man. Um, and yeah, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see this is obviously just the sort you know of evolution. Nice about this? I thought that's a great made guitar. Look at the neck drop. Look at that. That's really, really nicely designed. So these must have active pickups in, I'm guessing, from the battery department here. Or at least an active preamp. It is a silent circuit rather than active pickups, so uh, I'm cancelling the So some real kind of colours from the 60s. Uh, these are all American-made guitars. Um, so Maybe these the are all is probably the, the nicest one in my opinion. Yeah. <coughs> Slightly more understated. The, the, this is quite a cool looking bridge too. Yeah, so that's like a palm rest thing that you can still kind of... You get tired from your palm being used too much for anything else. You can just rest it here and it'll chill out. It'll be good for you. So these are going to set you back somewhere around about the 1400 mark, I think, 13, 1400 mark. But if that's a little bit too rich for you, let's wander around here because the uh, the Stingray guitars and the uh, Cutlass guitars are also all available from the Sterling range. And these are all going to be sort of like a sub 500 pound. Guitar. So the initial difference, there's no adjustable, no adjusted nut for yeah. intonation. Different trim. Yeah, different tremolo system. I doubt it's, it's got the active. It's the little tiny scratch. Yeah. Playing on the back that was here, no, that was really cool. no silent circuit. It'll just kind of be like a, the same kind of shape and feel, but without maybe some of the refinements on it. But if Actually, we have a I've got a friend all, with a guitar of so very similar color to this. It's kind of a very nice color. Fiesta red or salmon pink. Salmon pink. Or um, salmon pink. So that's those. And then there are also a cool new bass actually just on the other side if we want to. So Whereas something like the Stingray has always been about the big fat active kind of humbucking pickup bass sound, we now have a, a, a cutlass bass with a passive kind of P bass type circuit in it. I just walked past a guy called TJ, who's a fantastic bass player, who did some great work here. He's an only ball guy. Is he on the stage? He's just here. Oh, I didn't see him. Uh, so, a few different 
colours in the cutlass place. Uh, and the caprice. <laughs> so these are all passes. She's a great places. stripper. Yeah, caprice. She wasn't a stripper, she was like a model. Although well, maybe <laughs> she's stripped. I don't know. Uh, at the moment, I don't think there are sterling versions of these, at least I haven't seen any on the stand, so these are just the full US models. So again, all around about the 1500 pound model. Sexy. Sexy, yeah. It's a shame they couldn't get any bigger pickups for this base. So, that's us signing out now from the Music Man booth at NAMM 2016 um, and going off somewhere else now.